<laughs> all right. This is Mr. Kiddos, and this is all about velocity. So let's take a look at what you guys did this week. You guys had two cars, a red buggy and a blue buggy, and they were going different directions, but in a straight line along this number line. So let's take a look at what that looks like simplified. So there's a number line. There's our zero kind of matched it up there. And each of these marks represents 10 centimeters. So there's negative 20 because it's to the left of the zero. And there's positive 20. It's to the right of the zero. Okay. So we can replace uh, these buggies with little boxes and little arrows to indicate which way they're going. And we have them at the starting position. So this is at zero seconds, zero frames. Uh, that gives us exactly 0, 0.00 seconds. And they are facing each other, and they're at these various locations here. We play the video, and we end up with them going a certain amount of distance. And the total time uh, it took was 4.3 seconds, or 4 seconds and 9 frames, which comes out to that 4.3. So what your first task was to do was kind of take a look at that and give a written description. So you could say something like, the red car started at 60 centimeters and moved to the left at a constant pace, ending up at negative 96 centimeters after 4.30 seconds. And the blue car started at 55 centimeters on the negative side and moved to the right at a constant pace, ending up at 27 centimeters after 4.30 seconds. Some of you decided that it would be really cool to basically put bars that represent the distance traveled of each car. And this one would be how far that traveled, 82, and the other one would be 156. And that's cool. This bar graph does tell us the total distance covered for each car in the same elapsed time. That's great. The red car went 156 centimeters compared to the blue car that went 82. But what it doesn't tell us is if we were to come back and look at this later, we don't know where they started or ended. We have an ending and a beginning, but we don't know, did it go from left to right, right to left? We'd have to look back at the written description and this graph to be able to do that. We need a graph that could tell us all those things. So some of you came up with a different kind of graph. And for us to see this, we're going to take this a number line and put it on its side. All right, and we're gonna call this position. That means this is the place where each of these things were at some point. Then we're going to stack a bunch of those to the right, but in order to do that, we're just going to give it a time axis, also known as clock reading. Okay, now let's say, let's split those up. Let's put the zero time at the beginning and the final time at where it belongs on the timeline there. So you can kind of see this number line just keeps repeating up and down, up and down, up and down over here. And this number line's over here as well, but the difference is that it's 4.30 seconds after we started. All right, well, let's say we go through and kind of go through even steps of time. So I went every 43 frames and I plotted out where that would be. So here's where the blue car was and where the red car was after 43 frames, and then another 43 frames, and finally we have our ending there, right? So why 43? Well, the total frames were 129. I divided that up. Okay, so take a look at this. If I were to connect the fronts of the red cars and the fronts of the blue cars here in time, they plot out this line in position and time. This graph is a line graph, and it's really a scatter plot with some trend lines, because you could have measured some dots above and below, and this kind of gives you the general idea of how fast and how far they are going and which way. So this car, this graph can tell us where each car is at any time. It tells us the total distance covered by each, and it also gives us the direction of travel. Does this mean it could give us the speed as well? Well, let's find out what speed is first. Speed is the time rate of change of distance. 
the one that we are more familiar with, though, is probably average speed, which is the total distance divided by how much time it took, or elapsed time. What's the big difference? Well, speed is the pace you are going at that moment, and average speed is the pace you would go if you were at a constant pace the entire time for that distance. Let's look at an example, average speed versus speed. So let's say I do this often, I go to Nogales, and you pass Green Valley if you're going down I-19. That's about 100 kilometers altogether, Green Valley being about 40. Well, let's say one of those days you're driving down and there's traffic that's really slow from Tucson to Green Valley and it takes you an hour just to get to Green Valley. Ugh, traffic, you know? And then it clears up, so the next 60 kilometers only takes you half an hour. So, cool. What was my total time? Yeah, it took me an hour and a half to go 100 kilometers, so uh, I could figure out some things from that. On the way to Green Valley, you notice that the speedometer read 30 kilometers per hour. You're going pretty slow. Later, when you were going between Green Valley and Nogales, you looked at it and it said 100 kilometers per hour. Huh. The average speed isn't the average of those two numbers. We don't know how much and how long you were going for those rates, and the speedometer was changing all the time. However, because you know how much time it took versus how far you went, you can figure out the average speed. So the total distance was 100 kilometers. The total time, it took us one hour for the first part, half an hour for the second part, an hour and a half. So we can take our average speed, which will be 100 kilometers divided by 1.5 hours. We get 67 kilometers each hour. At one point, the speed was 30, and another point, the speed was 100. So our average speed wasn't our actual speed at any time, really, there. We might have crossed it at some point while we sped up from the slow traffic jam to how fast we were going, but there was traffic along the way, so we were going faster than 100 and slower than 100, and eventually we got there in half an hour. So our overall average was 67 kilometers each hour. So when is the average speed equal to the actual speed? Well, only if the speed is constant the entire time, like our cars. Okay, so let's take a look at this graph again. How far did each car go? Let's look at the beginning and end points. That's what they're circled here. Well, the blue car started at negative 55 centimeters and ended at 27 centimeters. Well, 55 centimeters to zero, and then another 27, that comes out to 82 centimeters. Cool. The red car started at 60 and ended at ni negative 96. So we went from 60 centimeters to get to zero, and then another 96 to get to uh, the other side, right? And so that's a total of 156 centimeters. Well, how fast did it go? Okay, well, the blue car went 82 centimeters in 4.3 seconds. We can do that division. Average speed is distance divided by time, and we end up with 19 centimeters per second. The red car is 156 centimeters in 4.3 seconds. Its average speed is going to end up being 36 centimeters per second. This graph does show us how fast they're going. And if you take a look, it's how steep those lines are. Look how steep the red line is compared to the blue line. The red car was faster than the blue car. Hmm. So what does it mean if one is going upwards, like this blue one here, and the other one isn't? Well, if we look back at the video, one car was going one way, the other car was going a different way. So that gives us a sense of direction. Whoa. This graph not only tells us the speed, but it also tells us the direction of each car. This special quantity, speed, and direction can be combined together as one, and that is velocity. Velocity is the vector quantity, which just means it has a direction. And it's the time rate of change of position. Well, how do we get direction from the graph? Well, we always subtract the end position 
and the start position. So start from the end. We always take end minus start to get our things. If we look at the last time minus the initial time, we always end up with a positive time change, 4.3 seconds. So here are some definitions. Position is kind of like the place where an object is at. Right? It's over there. It's over here. It's on a number line. Clock reading is literally that. It's You looked at what time it was at a given moment. And changes are always subtracted, the ending minus the starting. So displacement is the change in position of an object. It's the end position minus the start position. And elapsed time is just how much time it took between clock readings. So, oh, it was 4.3 now, that's the end, and it was 0 before, so 4.3 minus 0, 4.3 seconds. So, we already found the distance. What about the displacement of both cars? What's the difference? So, if we look at the blue car starting at negative 55 centimeters and ending at 27 centimeters, the displacement is end position minus start position. We plug those numbers in. Notice that we have to be careful with sign here. And we end up with a positive 82 centimeters, which means the car ended up 82 centimeters to the right of where it started, since to the right was our positive. Let's look at the red car. The red car started at 60 centimeters and then ended up at negative 96 centimeters. Again. Displacement is end position minus start position. We subtract those two numbers, paying very careful attention to the sign, and we end up with a negative 156 centimeters. What does that mean? It means that the red car ended up 156 centimeters to the left of where it started. What about average velocity of each car? Well, average velocity, kind of like average speed, you take the total displacement and divide it by the total amount of time that displacement happened in. So the blue car went 82 centimeters in 4.3 seconds, so we end up with 19 centimeters per second. Right? It's going 19 centimeters to the right each second. The red car was going negative 156 centimeters in 4.3 seconds, which gives us that 36 centimeters per second, but in the negative direction. So negative 36 centimeters per second. That means the car was going to the left 36 centimeters each second. And you can kind of see that I've laid out this. In one second time, the blue car went forward 19 centimeters, or to the right 19 centimeters. And in the same amount of time, the red car went left 36 centimeters. So let's take a look at our position time graph. Well, we can model this. The model for this kind of graph, this line, is something you may have seen before. y equals mx plus b. Well, y is the vertical axis, and x is the horizontal axis. The b, also known as the y-intercept, well, that's just the value when x is 0. And m, well, that's the slope of the line. That's the rate of change of y compared to x. On this graph, y is position, and x is clock reading, or time. So we end up, if we replace those variables with the words that they mean, we end up with something like this. Position is equal to m, we don't know what that is yet, the slope times time, plus that y-intercept b. Okay, so let's look at those two last things a little more carefully. So right now we have this. All right, what is b again? Well, that's the value when our time is zero. Wasn't that our start position? We can also call this initial position, initial start those are some of the things physicists like to use initial, but we can use start as well. What about m? Well, m is the slope. It's the rate of change 
of how much y change there is, vertical change, compared to the horizontal change. In this case, we are talking about the change in position over the elapsed time. This looks very familiar. This is displacement divided by elapsed time. That's average velocity. Sweet. We now have a complete model for something that is moving at a constant pace will create a straight line on a position time graph. And the model for that will be this. Position is equal to average velocity times time plus that initial position. We can use this to figure out the position of something at any time if we know how fast it's going and which direction it's going each second on average and if we know where it started. Thanks. I hope you enjoyed that.